Okay, I will go super fast with that, because I'm very busy with, hmm, I don't know yet, but I will find something to do. Anyway, just try to follow along. It is super easy and super fun. And so, we are on GTK Rust Template Project, which is a boilerplate script to initiate a new Flatpak Rust app. And we want to go to Merge Requests, and to GTK4 port. Remember that's number 11, although don't worry about it that much. In the next couple of days it should be merged on master. Anyway, next we need to clone this, so we open a terminal. And do a git clone, and the repository I copied before with my pure GitLab skills, without you even noticed when and how. Speaking of my amazing GitLab skills, check out how I'm merging a pull request from a different remote. Cool, huh? Okay, now we have this Python script we want to run and it will go through some questions. Application name I'll say the app. Project name, obviously the same but with hyphens. Application ID is the reverse domain, which is world.babywoke. Which reminds me I should upload the site at some point. The author details gets them from git global config. And so all done. What all this did was to create the app directory, so let's get inside it. And by the way we should move it somewhere outside but it doesn't matter for now. Meanwhile let me show you another cool trick. So I open the project with Visual Studio Code, and it will immediately auto-detect the Flatpak manifest, and it will ask if we want to initiate a build. But I'll close that for now. And if we go to Visual Studio Marketplace, we will find a Flatpak extension that basically adds some quick scripts and shortcuts. So basically we can fully work our project on Microsoft code, and we don't need to change code editors, which is a thing everyone hates I believe. So I will initiate the build from command palette, and if we're missing some runtimes it will say on terminal. Basically apart from SDK from Nightly, you also need REST SDK 20.08. Okay, now the initialization was successful, we can proceed with the build and run. Only there is a tiny issue which is actually a bug on the VS Code extension, rather on the project build template. Long story short, the build will fail, and so we're going to use GNOME Builder after all. At least till this bug gets fixed. So, select a folder. Find our project in this terrible file picker. And finally open it. And then just hit the play button and leave Builder to do all the rest. But Flatpak Rust builds are huge and last long the first time, so till finishes it's a great opportunity to go out of video context, but for a good reason I believe. So this is an article by Chris Davis, which is a very active GNOME contributor, so I guess you know him already. And basically he says don't use Glade, and below he explains the reasons and the issues with it. One thing you should know is that Builder's designer is pretty much an integrated Glade, so the shortcomings apply there too, more or less. But it was on the comments section that something really attracted all my attention, and my arguments too. So Chris responding to someone, he says that GTK developers are focused to make GTK better, and they aren't the developers of Glade. But if GTK developers aren't responsible for the building tools, and especially for the designer of the toolkit, then who is it? Chino? Definitely not my fault, but Coco, patches are welcome. Poof! Too cute for writing code. So basically a part that we can't easily prototype without a designer, and it is nearly impossible to write XML files manually. A bigger problem especially for new GTK app developers, is that it's very hard to learn the available widgets and how to compose them. And to be honest, I'm not very optimistic we'll get a new designer on Builder for GTK4 anytime soon. And the reason I'm saying all those, is because I don't want to overexcite you that you can actually build a GTK4 app inside a week. It is certainly easy to getting started, but scaling it is a new whole different universe. Anyway, right on time that compile finished, da -da -da! and we're having our first Rust app. It may cannot do a lot at the moment, but it is using the official development theme and it has an under construction icon too. And that's something. Also we have header bars and a main menu, plus keyboard shortcuts and an about dialog too. But the most impressive of everything, is that we can get this flat pack manifest, 
and literary open a pull request to Flathub and share it with everyone. At least when GTK4 will be available on the stable SDK. And that's the part that GNOME has done a fantastic job. And make no mistake, all those started by GNOME and for GNOME, and later it just spread. So, beyond that point you want to continue by reading the GTK4 examples. Then you also need to read the API, and I'm not sure how complete and stable that is, but Bilal told me that most of the stuff you need to start is there already. Speaking of which, I strongly suggest to look at Authenticator source code, that has been already ported to GTK4. And because Bilal contributes big on Rust bindings, you will certainly find the best practices there. Ouch! That should hurt! And I wish you to start fresh and you won't need to port anything, but there is also a migration guide from GTK3, which it can be proved a bit useful even if that's your first try. So that was everything for now! And so, good luck! You will need it!